That one only went. Wait a second. Hold an on. Inch farther. Hello, everyone. Welcome to part two of my series exploring energy versus momentum. Um, before I get going, I feel it's important to actually uh, provide some explanation about why I decided to do this test. So I originally got the idea for this test after watching a video by Todd's Workshop. So Todd of Todd's Workshop, he does a lot of crossbow work, uh, medieval type crossbows. It's really interesting. Check him out if you haven't already. But so in his video, I forget the title of it. I'll probably post a picture of it. But he had heard stories that people were using crossbows to shoot through sandbags because the rifle bullets would be stopped by the sandbags, but crossbow bolts would zip right through them and hit the guy on the other side. So he did a test with his lockdown longbows, shooting an arrow through sandbags that would have stopped even a 308. And so my idea is, huh, well I wonder if a slower bullet that's heavier would go through more material than a faster bullet moving at a uh, faster, lighter bullet. So that's kind of the logic behind why I'm testing this. And so let's go over to our test bench and get started. Okay, so this is what we got for today. Um, we once again have our Seneca Eagle Claw. This is at the same power setting as in my previous video. And this is what took a while to get. And this is our homemade ballistic gelatin. Uh, the mix for this is 16 ounces of gelatin to one gallon of water. And so the goal is we're going to see how far this guy goes through and this guy go through. And then I'm actually going to do it again, but we're going to crank the Seneca up to uh, 30, 30 plus foot pounds. Not its most powerful setting, but its second most powerful. And we're gonna see exactly how far these go and see if we can get some answers to my original question. Okay, so first up, just like last time, our lightweight pellet. Um, the weight for this is 13.12 grains. Um, I re chronoed these and redid all the numbers for them. This should be about 766 feet per second, 17.1 pound feet of energy. And our momentum score is just over 10,000. And here we go. I'm gonna to try to put this uh, more toward the bottom. Here we go. Okay, so next up is our heavy pellet, the JSB Jumbo Monster. These are 25.39 grains. Uh, muzzle velocity as tested, same setting on the air gun is 575 our energy is 18.6 so that's another pound and a half but that's only nine percent more muzzle energy so that's the best we that's the best we can do and it's gonna have to work you can't really get exact with this the adjustment's a little too coarse but our momentum is 14,600 so we're still actually about 40, about 45 percent more um, momentum than the previous pellet. So we're going to see if that makes any difference. Going to put this one high this time. Okay, let's go have a look. Okay, so hey, let's get this in the sun. So you hope you guys can see that. But our low pellet is right here, right here on the bottom. The heavy pellet right here is on the top. So, I, I, need, <laughs> I think that's a pretty definitive answer to what momentum does on target. I would venture to guess this is quite possibly maybe, this might actually be 40, Five percent more than the bottom. Let's get a let's get a tape measure and figure out exactly how much farther that went. 
Okay, hopefully you can see this. So in our homemade DIY ballistic gel, our lightweight pellet, which is right here, made it five and a half inches through our block. And our heavyweight pellet went seven and seven eighths, almost eight inches. So I'll get my calculator out real quick and we'll see how much farther that is. Well, nothing can go quite right anytime, ever. Uh, we actually did find a slight problem. Um, my cameraman, he actually noticed we have, a bullet pellet went in right here for the bottom, for the low velocity, for the fast light pellet. Um, it actually skimmed the wood. I was a little too generous with how low I could shoot at the shorter range. But, come here. So, I don't actually see any actual damage to the pellet, except for just a, just a touch right here. But for fairness, we're gonna have to shoot the low speed. Why keep thinking low? We're gonna have to shoot our light pellet again. So bear with us, let's do it again quick. Okay, so the lightweight pellet again, this time not quite as low. Okay, let's have a look at that. Okay, well, let's see. There we go. Here it is right there. So apparently the other one went right here. And so this going to last like a half an inch at most from barely touching the wood. So still this is, I guess that first pellet actually was fair. So I'll measure these, let's measure these quick and see exactly how much farther our heavy pellet went versus the light one. Okay, so I just did the math. Um, it's actually very exciting because in this test, the results are so much different than in our tin can test, which I might revisit. I found some errors with that test that I think could be improved upon greatly. But here's the interesting thing. In our previous test, the heavyweight pellet did so much worse than our lightweight pellet. The lightweight pellet went through a another can as opposed to the heavyweight pellet so in that test we decided that velocity is what punches through steel and i still stand by that but in this test our lightweight pellet went not as far as our heavyweight pellet but so we just measured everything and did the math real quick and it's very exciting because the percentage farther that our heavyweight pellet our heavyweight pellet went versus our lightweight pellet is about 43% farther, which is very exciting because our heavyweight pellet had about 45% more momentum than our lightweight pellet. And so I think we can answer pretty conclusively that momentum is what penetrates through soft material. So this is a pretty big win and I think I'm not even for sure that I can actually shoot through a catch a pellet with the higher power um, setting, but we'll give it a go. So let's try it. Okay, so we are still at full charge. Um, so we're gonna crank this up to the next notch, which I have dubbed uh, H1 for high power level one. This is the second most powerful setting. And let's see this is our lightweight pellet. Let's see if we can even catch this. All right, low as before. Go over to the side a bit. Here we go. And that looks good. And our heavy pellet. Right here, probably is right. Okay, let's go have a look. Okay, so let's start with our lightweight pellet. You can probably see it, but our lightweight pellet that we fired second, well, last, is right here, and our first one is right here. Um, the approximate numbers for our second pellet are as follows. So our velocity is about 1,022 feet per second. Our energy is 
foot-pounds and our momentum should be roughly 13,400. And so what's the increase between our previous numbers? Well, our momentum for our lightweight pellet is up by 33%. Our, muzzle, our velocity is also up roughly about 30%. And our energy is just under double. So look at that weight. So if we look at this, that energy that the higher setting provided is completely wasted on target. It did not, well, almost, maybe not completely, but this is only, this is about five and a half inches, and this is about six and an eighth, which is like close to 10% more even though we have double the energy and 30% more velocity and about as much increase in momentum. So why is this? We'll get back to that in a moment. So now moving on to our heavyweight pellets. This is a much bigger difference than our lightweight pellets, even with on the same setting. So our Inc so numbers are as follows. For our last heavyweight pellet, our velocity should be about 762. And that is an increase of, I think it was like, I'll put it, I'll put it up on screen. And our energy jumped from 18.6 to 32.75 for this one. Also, our momentum. Our momentum went up from 14,600 to 19,400, which is a 30% increase. Um, penetration for our first shot here is about seven and seven eighths and for our second shot is 11 and a quarter. Our penetration in distance is actually about 43% more than our lightweight pellet. So our heavyweight pellet really benefited from the extra power, whereas our lightweight pellet did not. So why is this? Well, to me, this reminds me greatly of if you have water and you gently pat your hand down on it, you feel a slight increase in resistance for a moment and then your hand goes through the water. But then if you forcefully slap your hand down as fast as you can, you get a tremendous slap as well as some pain in your hand and your hand is brought to a pretty quick near dead stop. And so my theory is that we have sort of a similar effect with our lightweight pellet. There's kind of a certain uh, speed where once we hit this going so fast, the slap effect begins to take over and saps a lot of energy out of our target. Wonderful results. The heavyweight pellet completely obliterated our lightweight pellet in this test. Um, so for our next video in this series, I'm actually going to add something to simulate, um, hide or skin to simulate a squirrel hide right here. And we're going to shoot this again. Of course, we'll remelt it and get rid of the old, uh, trails and etc. in this. So we got a fresh block and we'll see how much that skin slows these bullets down. Okay. So thank you guys for watching. It's really interesting to do this. Um, please leave a like if you found this interesting. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section uh, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos or if you've done similar tests to what we did today. Um, I'd love to hear any feedback from you guys. So until next time, thank you for watching.